Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at tweening in FreeCAD. So that's tweening between one curve, curve A, to another curve, curve B and filling the in-between with curves that can do stuff like this for instance. So this is an old blog post and basically when I started out in 3D one of the packages that I used and I still love to today but it's too expensive is Rhino 3D. It's a brilliant nerves modeler and it has a number of different features in there that I would love to port to FreeCAD. And one of them is the actual tweening. So tween is in between, so it creates those curves in between. And you can make things such as this. Now these are the Rhino docs and it shows the tween curves function here. So these are the two curves you start with and then in between it creates these, what's known as intermediate curves. And this can be done in FreeCAD with the Curves Workbench, and we use ISO curves. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content, and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So to do this, all we do is we create a number of curves. So I'm gonna recreate what we saw in that document. So I'm gonna go along the XY plane and I'm gonna create a simple curve in here to start with. I'll use a B spline. Well, I'll say simple. B splines are the most complex curves. So that's our first curve. Let's close that. I'm gonna create another curve. Make sure nothing's selected and we'll create another curve in here. Again, using the B spline, let's place this one a bit differently, something like, something like that. So we have two curves. I'm gonna create some distance between these because we need an in-between. So let's go along the Z. Let's actually take it along the Z and the Y so we're going to place this one somewhere over here and also place some X along there as well. And let's place a bit of angle. It's just for, for demonstration sakes. And we don't want that type of angle because that defeats the point. So we have two curves that are some distance away. So we've got them a nice distance away. We've got two options now. So we have to create a surface between these to create the curves. We can do that by two means. I'm gonna come over to the part and I can select one, control select the other curve and use a ruled surface or part. We come down to create a ruled surface between those and that creates a ruled surface. If you wanted to, you could create another curve in here and instead of doing a ruled surface, we could do a loft. So we're lofting between surfaces, so we're creating surfaces at the moment. So for that, we will just use a part and then the loft functionality and bring those in and hit OK. So exactly the same. Now this is where we create the in-between curves. If we come over to the Curves Workbench, we've got something called ISO curves and they sit here, so ISO curves. So we select the surface. It's also available from surfaces ISO curve. That creates a grid upon that surface. If we look, we get the ISO curve in the left-hand side here, and we can come down, and that's shrink the placement, and we've got the U and the V here. So this controls the v, U and V parameters of this surface of this ISO curve. Basically, U and V are the same as X and Y. It's just increments across there. So if you look at the U, one of these will be the U axis. So if I zero that off, you can see I've taken out the lines that go this way. So basically, this is UV mapping. So it's U and V. And it gives that extra coordinate system to allow for this mapping that's going on here. Won't go too much into it because it can get quite complicated in that area of guiding UV mapping, etc. And it's not in scope for this tutorial. So we got the U and V parameters. So what's happened is you can see that we've got, if I hide the surface, because we no longer need that, 
we've got a set of intermediary curves and I can come into the ISO curves at any time and up this to say 6 and have those in there. Now the thing with these curves they're all edges. If we highlight these they're edges. They're one object and this is quite an important thing to understand and I think I'm going to go through this in another video is that if you have a number of edges like this and they're under one item in the tree view so it's known as compound object there's tools in the part workbench and other workbenches that we can deal with compound objects the lattice 2 workbench has a number of tools in there to deal with compounds but we just need the ones from the part so we come up to the part and what we've got after we've selected the ISO we've got the compound drop down which allows you to explode the compound when you explode the compound it takes each of those edges and places them in a separate item in the tree view which we can access so you can see we've got all these ISO curves what I'm going to do is come into the original loft because I can see that the sketches are still there because they're colored in white they're still valuable and I'm just going to hide those just make it easier and we've got the ISO curves. so if we roll over these you can see they're there what we can do with the ISO curves is we can play with these quite a bit so for instance we can take the ISO curves and extrude them and I'm going to go five millimeters and okay that's extruded them along the chosen axis so when you highlight them all you add that extrusion to them all so let's come back into that in a minute and delete those and show you what I did so the ISO curves are here so we highlight them and press the spacebar to show them I selected them all and we use the extrude and we've got the different axes here so if I wanted to go along say the Y axis this way then I can choose that axis by just clicking on the Y and going 10 millimeters along there and that places that like so. Once we've extruded we can also extrude in different directions as well so for instance I can extrude in the Z direction of 10 mil and we start to get this extrusion of extrudes like so. So let's have a look at our next example so we're looking at this one so we've got our start curve which is basically a closed B spline and then the outside closed B spline. Now the same applies. Let's come in and create those curves or those B splines. So come into the sketcher, we'll create a sketch looking along the XY plane. Now we're going to create one edge using the B spline tool. So this is all curves which go in hand in hand with B splines. They're the most complicated curve to create and we can do this using this type of method because it creates one single face so I'm going to create a shape something like this and then we're going to create our other shape inside so I'm going to close that and create a new sketch XY plane again and I'm going to create a shape in here so we'll go through a B spline again and we'll create a smaller shape that goes around here again connecting up I've got the auto remove redundant constraints auto constraints are on so when I hover over one of those constraints it connects up like so so we have two sketches come back to the part and this time I'm going to loft part loft and then I'm going to go from the outside in and see what happens now the reason why this is happening look at the vertex so you can see this vertex here so the vertex starts here and this vertex starts here so the loft is having trouble creating this connection so we need to align these vertices with each other so the vertex should be about here for the inside one so this one here so this is a thing that you need to be wary of when you're creating these. So let's just move this around here so it's in line. And this is going to be a bit awkward. I might just resketch this actually. 
Let's take this and resketch it. So what we can do is bring in that vertex. So bring in that one there. And we'll make some geometry. We can do this by eye. So if I wanted to, I could create some geometry in here just to make sure that I keep in line with that vertex. We don't have to do that. It's construction geometry. So use this construction geometry there. We don't have to do this, but if we just want to figure out whereabouts that vertex is going to be placed, then we can use that and use the B spline to connect up and move our way around like so. What we'll do now is get a better surface when we connect back up, hit escape, because these two vertices are in line. So you can see now that loft has fixed itself because we've taken the inner circle out or the inner B-spline and moved the vertex around. So it's here, there's no crossovers. So now we've got that, what we can do is come over to the Curves Workbench, select the top surface, and this time I'm going to use the toolbar, so create a ISO curve. These look very similar, these two. Matter of fact, they look virtually the same, except for this one's got a dotted line that goes around the top. That's a totally different tool, so this ISO curves. And you can see we've got basically almost a spider web going on here. So look at the ISO curves and we've got the U and the V. And sometimes it's quite hard to figure out which one the U is and which one the V is, which I've managed to get straight away. So I've pressed the spacebar on that surface, clicked on the surface, pressed the spacebar to hide it. Go to the ISO curves, you can see the U and V there. And we've got the five curves that we want within. We could go for four. And remember to take the sketches that are inside the loft. You may have to span this out control select those and press the spacebar. So we've got the ISO curves here. We can explode the ISO curves again over in the part workbench and go to part compound, explode compound. This does live on the toolbar. So normally when you come up to the toolbar, you'll see this make compound visible. You can explode the compound there as well. So I've exploded the compound into the separate parts and we can do some surfacing against here. Or we can extrude these or do what we want. So for instance, I can take all of those and extrude and hit OK. And that extrudes those up as separate circles. So we've got all those circles in there of different sizes. I'll say circles there, B spine ovals. So we can make like contour lines. Now this technique I'm going to be using for something that I want to do in the future. And I've got a project on the go and I've been trying to find a technique to use. And it's only, I've only just realized that me teaching this tutorial, I can actually use this technique for what I want. So I'm going to return to that at some point and actually do a tutorial around that. It's, it's regarding some organic modeling around architecture and I need some contour lines for hills. And this is perfect for that type of application. So that's it for the tutorial. I hope that gives you some idea of how to use some of the ISO curve features. ISO curves are very, very powerful, by the way, and they can be used in many different features. And we can do a lot with them, including splitting surfaces, creating grids on surfaces and using those to create faces, etc. And I'll be going through those in other tutorials. But for the time being, I'm going to leave you with that. And that's how to use ISO surfaces in a tweening fashion, as you would see in something like Rhino 3D. In the future, I'll be looking at this and controlling it by a different type of curve where we can actually edit the surface with control points on here. And that's something I'm working on. It requires a macro, but it's something that I'm working on in the background around this. And I went over on a Patreon video and explained what I'm looking to do. I actually went through the video of the tween surface in Rhino 3D and how that can be applied to FreeCAD. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. 
If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.